Hi guys! Alrighty, so today I'm going to make a video defining some words that I've learned over the years. So we're not only going to go over an acronym, but also some basic things like sex and gender identity and romantic attraction and sexual orientation. You know, nothing big or anything. Just want to give a shout out to the College of St. Rose resident assistant, especially Caleb, my lovely friend, um, who inspired me slash asked me to make a video like this. And the last thing I want to say before diving in is that labels are just a word that is the closest thing to what someone identifies as. They're not boxes. They're not something that you have to fit into. They are just words that define communities, that define an overarching feeling, but everything underneath that overarching feeling is different and unique. So if you get what I'm saying, labels are pretty fluid. So when I say something about a label, that's just my definition of what I've learned from speaking with people that have that label, but there might be someone who feels entirely different that labels themselves that way. So by no means is this a dictionary video. All right, so first let's tackle the acronym LGBTQIAP. There is more to this acronym. That's why you usually see LGBT plus 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 plus, but these are just first little chunk that I'm going to define. Well, the L stands for lesbian, which is a woman-identified person who is attracted to other women-identified people. So the G stands for gay, um, a person who's attracted to other people that have the same sex or gender identity as them. So a man attracted to other men, a woman attracted to other women, a trans woman attracted to other women, a trans man attracted to other men gender fluid person attracted to only other gender fluid people. Um, basically, so gay and homosexual, homo means one and the same, so the same, attracted to the same. B stands for bisexual, which is someone who is attracted to more than one gender. So T stands for transgender or transsexual. Transgender is an umbrella term for someone whose psychological gender identity, which is in your mind, um, does not align with what they were assigned at birth. So typically female born persons are assigned a gender identity of a woman or a girl, and male born persons are assigned a gender identity of a man or a boy. I personally define transgender as transcending the gender that one is assigned at birth. I consider transsexual to be transcending sex. And the complicated thing about transsexual is it does fall underneath the transgender umbrella. And people who identify as transsexual, that is a self-identifier, so is transgender. It's something that you elect if you feel like it applies to yourself. So with transsexual, basically, typically that involves someone who does have some form of hormone alteration or surgical alteration to their body to alter themselves physically. Whereas with transgender, like I said, gender is in your mind, and so it does not need to involve hormones or surgery at all. But in order to alter one's sex, it typically involves hormones or surgery. So transsexual would be someone who has access to or elects to alter themselves physically. The Q could stand for queer or questioning. For queer, it's sort of an umbrella term like transgender. A lot of people will choose the word queer as a label because it's more fluid and it encompasses all of this acronym and beyond. Um, basically, queer just signifies that you are part of sexual or gender minority and that is what you identify as. Um, queer can refer to not only your sexual orientation, but also your gender identity. Questioning is similarly, it can refer to either your sexual orientation or your gender identity. It just means that you're in a phase of questioning, you know, who you're interested in or how you identify or what your gender identity is. And questioning can last from a few days or a few hours to years and years and years. Someone could question it for their entire life and that is completely valid and completely fine. I mean, we're all still learning. So it's basically just a term to say I identify somewhere in here, but I'm just not really sure yet, or I am questioning this choice of a label that I originally had. It's very fluid in that sense. The I stands for intersex, which refers to someone who is born with ambiguous chromosomes or sexual anatomy, either internally or externally, that did not align with the doctored standard male or female. 
after sex is something that can sometimes be seen physically, but a lot of times cannot be seen physically, either until puberty or ever. Some people will go their entire lives living with an intersex body and not even know it. So basically what intersex refers to is this natural variance that we have in this world. Like, for instance, there's no way that all of us are going to be born standard or typical male or female because there's so much biological variance in our bodies in all sorts of other ways. So unfortunately, because society has sort of deemed these two standards of male or female in these boxes, there needs to be a category for people who don't fit into that, and that would be intersex. But the most important thing to know is that being intersex is by no means a deformity. It is just another representation and manifestation of our natural diversity when it comes to our biology. The A stands for asexual, and it is someone who experiences very, very minimal or no sexual attraction to others. And lastly, the P stands for pansexual, which refers to someone who is attracted to a person regardless of their gender. You might be asking, what about the A for allies? Well, my friend Caleb describes allies sort of as the cloud at the end of the rainbow, the cheering squad, the awesome support system that the LGBT plus acronym really needs in order to get further in our desire for equality, for acceptance, and for education. Allies are educated and supportive people who are absolutely crucial to the movement but are not a gender or sexual minority themselves. So now I'm going to discuss a little bit just about the basic definitions of sex, gender identity, gender expression, sexual orientation, and romantic attraction. Because sometimes it gets a little bit confusing, like why is the T on the LGB? Because transgender is referring to gender identity and lesbian, gay, bisexual refers to sexual orientations. Well, similarly, intersex is part of the acronym, and that refers to biological sex. And, like I mentioned, queer and questioning can both incorporate either sexual orientation or gender identity, or both. So it is a little bit confusing, and the way I see the acronym is that it is an acronym for gender and sexual minority. So it's important to know the differences between these categories and words because it's important to realize that these things exist independently. They in, in no way need to overlap or align. They're all different parts of ourselves. So here's how I define these things. So sex is a medical term that designates a certain combination of gonads, reproductive organ, organ se secondary sex characteristics, and hormone balances it's biology. Sex is medical. It's biology. Common terms for sex are male, female, and intersex. Gender is a social construct that usually assigns levels of masculinity and femininity based on someone's biological sex. So it incorporates not only the way society expects someone to identify as a woman or a man, but also that they would be a feminine woman or a masculine man, and that they would have certain behaviors, dress, actions, and roles based on this gender that they place upon someone's birth sex. Gender identity, on the other hand, is one's inherent sense of self, and it's their sense of self as being a man, a woman, or otherwise, or anything else in between or outside of that. It is totally internal, thus it cannot be seen. It is different than someone's biological sex because it's their sense of self. It's, it's so internal, and it's just knowing one's core gender. It's psychological. It's in there, and it does not have to align with someone's biological sex. Thus, it wouldn't align with the gender that society assigns to their biological sex, which leaves room for the entire transgender umbrella, someone who's transcending their gender because they identify as something different than what society expected them to. I think it's just important to slip in here the term cisgender, C-I-S gender. It refers to someone who is born, let's say, like my brother, he was born male, assigned the gender identity of a boy slash man, and he's grown up to identify as a boy and man. So basically, it's a term for those who are not transgender uh, to nor like to renormalize it, because otherwise, you'd be like, oh, so this is my friend, he's a transgender person, and this is my brother, and he's a normal boy. 
you know, so that wouldn't, the idea of normal or real uh, basically is negated. So we've got transgender, someone whose gender identity is different than assigned at birth, and we've got cisgender, someone whose gender identity aligns with the gender that they were assigned at birth. And both are beautiful and wonderful. Gender expression is the way that someone may dress, act, behave, cut their hair in order to express their internal gender identity. Sexual orientation describes the way that someone is sexually attracted to other people. So, for instance, lesbian, gay, bisexual, and asexual are all examples of sexual orientation. Romantic attraction, on the other hand, is the way that someone is emotionally attracted to other people in a romantic and emotionally connected way. So that can be different from one's sex life and sexual orientation and who they're attracted to sexually. They could be attracted to other people in an emotional way. And so they sometimes align, they sometimes don't. Like I said, with sex and with gender and with gender identity, sometimes they align, sometimes they don't. But it's important to know that there is difference there. I think I just want to end this again by saying that this is the way that I've learned these words and interpreted them and the way that I express them to others. However, like I said, they differ from person to person and by no means should you take this as fact. Also, and most importantly, since I just went over sex, gender, gender identity, and gender expression, and sexual orientation and romantic attraction, I just want to reiterate that these are all things that exist independently from one another but they hopefully can coexist peacefully inside all of us to make up our identities as a whole. And so thank you for listening to this video. It's just sort of a little 101, and I hope that it has helped in any which way. And if you've got any modifications you want to make to it or comments about it, please just leave them below and definitely take a look. So have a wonderful day.